In this video, we're going to go ahead and just practice a couple different equations solving for the variable in these equations. And we'll have one, our first one, where it's actually set to zero, and a couple others where we're going to have to set it to zero ourselves. And so we'll learn how to do that. So with our first one, um, y squared minus 8y plus 15 equals zero. So the first thing that we need to do on this first equation is factor it. Because we, it's a lot easier to solve for the variable when it's factored. And that's what we've established um, in the last video. So since we're experts at factoring now, this should not be a problem. So we know we're gonna have two sets of parentheses and it's gonna be equal to zero now, correct? So our first term is a y squared. So we know that each of our parentheses will start with a y. And we know that our signs will be the same. And if we jump back, we'll see that they're both negative. And what are the factors of 15? One and 15 and three and five. And we know that the three and the five would equal that negative eight. So a negative three and a negative five, if you multiply them, they would equal a positive 15. And if you add them together, it would give you a negative eight. So we went ahead and factored this, but what is the next step? Because we see that it has an equal zero in the end, this means we have to solve it. So in all of the other chapter, other sections in this chapter, that was it. We just got to this point. There is no equals or solution that we could, um, we could come up with because it wasn't actually an equation, it was just an expression. But on all of these, you're going to have that equal sign, and when it's an equation, you can solve it. So what are we doing here? We're taking the opposite of whatever the constant is. So in this example, for the first set of parentheses, y minus three, for that set of parentheses to equal zero, we would have to have y equals three. Three minus three would equal zero. In our second set of parentheses, y minus five, we would have to set y to five, five minus five would equal zero. And as long as one of these sets of parentheses is set to zero, zero times anything else is gonna equal zero. So that was a simple one. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a minute and erase what we have here so that I have a little bit more room to do these other two problems. And so you'll notice in our next problem, we have 625 equals x squared. That is not set to zero. But when I look at it, I can see that both of these terms are perfect squares. I can take the perfect square root of 625 and I can take the perfect square root of x squared. So that's a clue to me. This might end up being a difference of squares, but right now it's not. So what do I have to do? Well, if we remember our properties of equality from chapter two, we're still gonna be using them. So just because they're in a chapter that we went over weeks ago, doesn't mean we're done with it. Use our property of equality to set this side equal to zero and whatever you subtract on the one side, you subtract on the other. So now our equation can be written, these are gonna cancel out, so zero on one side, and on the other side we have x squared minus 625. Are we done? Have we solved it? We have only taken the first step to factoring this problem. Our next step would be to actually factor this difference of squares. So remember our properties of difference of squares, we have to have a perfect square on the front and a perfect square on the back with a minus sign in between. So take the square root of the first term, which would be x. Take the square root of the last term, which would be 25. And remember this sign means change or different, so we're gonna have x plus 25 and x minus 25. And remember, this is all equal to zero. So in this instance, we have the same number, but opposite. 
So we're going to have to have a negative 25 in one of them and a positive 25 in the other for the parentheses to equal zero. So in this case, x would have to equal a plus or minus 25. So you can use this, what we call a tolerance symbol, a plus or minus sign. You can use that to represent both 25s, both integers of 25, the positive and the negative. Or you can write out 25 comma negative 25. Either one of those is correct. Typically in videos and in class, you'll see me write using the plus minus sign in front of the constant. All right, so the last problem that we have, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and erase so that we have some room to work. And our last problem is 12b minus 15b equals negative 9b. So again, the first thing that I recognize on this one is it's not set to zero yet. So we need to use our properties of equality to get all the terms on one side and zero on the other. We want it to set to zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to add 9b to both sides. So if I add 9b to a negative 9b, that would equal zero. So now we're gonna have a zero on the one side, 12b squared, and what's a negative 15 plus nine? So, because these are like terms, we're combining like terms here. They both have the same variable and the variable has the same exponent, so we can combine them. So we have a negative 15 plus a nine or nine minus 15, whichever you prefer. And that's gonna give us a negative six B and that all equals zero. Are we done yet? Have we solved it? No, again, we've just taken the first step to factoring that equation. So the next step to factoring this equation is in this case, I can see I have a GCF. I have a B in each term, so each term can be divided by a B. And I know that each term can be divided by a six. All right, so if I take out a six and a B, in parentheses, I'm gonna be left with 12 divided by six equals two, b squared divided by b equals b, and then a negative 6b divided by a 6b is just going to be a negative 1, and that equals 0. All right, so this is a little trickier. So what do we have to do? Because we factored it. This is in factored form, but it, the answer might not be really easy to see right now. So when we look at the answer, we want to look where the variable is. There's a variable there, and then we have a variable inside the parentheses. So again, we're still going to have two solutions. So just because there's a variable outside doesn't mean we forget about it. So six times what is going to equal zero? Well, six times zero, correct? So our B is going to equal zero if it's right here. But what does this b have to be in order for it to equal zero? Again, we have to use our properties of equality. So inside this set of parentheses, we're actually going to have to solve for b. So how do we do that? Use our properties of equality, and we have to divide both of those terms by 2 to get the b by itself. So we're gonna have b minus one half. And what's the opposite of a negative one half? It would be just a positive one half. So just keep in mind that you might have to do your properties of equality within a set of parentheses to get the variable by itself so that you can actually solve that equation and get all of the different solutions. So for this one, the solutions would be zero because six times zero would equal zero. And then inside parentheses, the B would have to equal a positive one half. So this is just giving you an example, a few different examples of how to um, go through all the different factoring steps, but continuing on to solve the equation when it's set to zero.